Hello and welcome to my video where I'm going to explain how I managed to travel for four and a half months while making less than 20,000 US dollars. I'm going to break this video down into three main sections. One will include my lifestyle where I live, which is on Vancouver Island in Canada. Two will be my lifestyle where I tend to travel to, which for the past several years has been Colombia and South America. And three, I'll talk about my motivation for why I live the way that I do. Before I begin, let me be clear about a few things. I do not have a whole bunch of money in the bank. I have not made a bunch of money from trading cryptocurrency or stocks or commodities or anything like that. Uh, I was not left a big inheritance. And so when I say that I make 20,000 US dollars, that is what I have to spend during that calendar year. So let's get right to it. First and foremost, I'll talk about my job. Now, I don't want to get into the details of where I work or exactly what I make per hour, but again, suffice it to say that in the seven and a half months that I do work, I make approximately 20,000 US dollars, which is approximately 24,000 Canadian dollars. Obviously, if I worked that other four and a half months, I'd be making more. And so again, for clarity, when I go away, I am not making any money from stocks or cryptocurrency or anything of the sort. So I'm surviving while I go away on the money that I made while I was working. What I can tell you is that I work at a university and I have a job which is technically I'm on call. But I've worked my way to uh, the point where in seniority I have this good spot where I'm high enough where I literally work full-time hours every week. So I'm working five days per week, seven and a half hours per day. And because I'm on call, and this is one of the key things obviously that allows me to go away, I can go away for four and a half months and just let them know I'm not available. It's as, as simple as that. So that really makes the huge difference. I have that control over my life where I can uh, go away. But I've also purposely work towards setting my life up this way because I do like my freedom to travel and I travel during the winters, the Canadian winters that is, uh, when it's not so busy and so they don't need me as much as uh, during the spring through fall. So that's the way that works. Before I continue, I will say that most people are not going to be willing to do the things that I'm willing to do in order to live the way that I do, traveling. As for my living situation, again, that's a little bit different than most people. Uh, I do rent. I don't own any property or a home. I rent a tiny, tiny little place, which I will show you when I get home. I'm at a beautiful park nearby, nearby where I live right now. But anyway, I don't live in a normal apartment. I used to, but now the uh, prices of apartments in Victoria are so high that um, I decided to make some sacrifices and I live in a, a little 12 and a half by 12 and a half foot um, cubicle <laughs> above uh, somebody's work shed and I actually do my cooking down in that workshed area in the, the lower path, which I, again, I'll explain in when I show you the video of that. But I pay a very, very small amount, a third of what most people are paying for, for instance, a one bedroom apartment in Victoria. So 
that enables me to be able to save up money really, really quickly. And then in the price that I pay includes internet, water, and as I'll explain when I get home, I don't even actually have hot water. I don't have my own bathroom, so I use the washrooms and the showers where I work, which is, again, fortunate that I'm able to do that. And that's the basics of that. I pay very little rent, but I don't have the, the uh, comforts that a lot of people do as well. I suppose that I should probably mention that uh, I am not married, have never been married, and I don't have any kids, and so I don't have the expense of a current wife, or an ex-wife, or ex-wives, or children. Now that's a long story in itself. It's not that I didn't want to uh, find a lovely wife. It's, it, uh, it happens or it doesn't for some people, and so far for me, it hasn't happened. And of course, when you are not a person who is considered to be um, motivated to earn lots of money and buy a house and own the nice car and all the things that a lot of uh, Americans and Canadians typically do, then you're not considered uh, husband or boyfriend material by a lot of women. That's just the way it is. But I'm not on this planet to be a people pleaser. I want to find happiness in life and happiness, peace and harmony and all that good stuff. That's what motivates me and having wonderful health. So if it happens one day and I meet somebody, great. But that's the basics of that. I'll try not to get into a bunch of long-winded explanations on these types of things. Uh, next up, I drive a 1998 blue Honda CRV, and I bought that three years ago for 1,800 Canadian dollars, or about 1,200 US. And uh, three years later, it's still going strong and a good, reliable car. And I'm not the type of person who cares about trying to impress other people via owning a nice car. So I'm quite content to have a good, reliable car. I've had lots of Hondas over the many years, and they've been very good to me and uh, I put minimal amount of money into that for maintenance and it's probably only worth about $500 if I was to try to sell it right now but uh, again I don't have any car payments and again I guess I should just mention that for clarity uh, I owe nothing to no one I don't owe anything to credit card companies or to any individual so Again, I've made a point of staying out of debt and I'm quite content with keeping life simple. Next up, I rarely go out for dinner. So when it comes to food costs, I do, I'm extremely picky and selective about what I eat, what I put into my body. And I don't mind mentioning that I'm 61 years old and I am extremely healthy, I'm fit. I don't have any health issues whatsoever. And um, so I do spend probably, I don't know, I'm gonna guess 500 Canadian dollars or 380 US per month for food. And that's buying a lot of good quality organic products. I won't get into the way I eat, but uh, it's all good quality food and I'm pretty disciplined at not putting junk into my food. Next, I don't drink alcohol and I haven't for basically 30 years now. But to be super clear, that doesn't mean I 
have anything against trying a glass of wine here and there a couple times a year or when I'm in Columbia for instance um, I was at a monastery uh, it's in one of my videos and uh, the mother dressed in her nun uniform uh, offered us a glass of the the wine that was made at the monastery and I thought well, that's a unique and cool opportunity so I have nothing against uh, actually having a drink on occasion or if it was a special occasion next I absolutely do not do any drugs of any type including marijuana I don't smoke anything uh, I don't take any recreational drugs or pharmaceutical drugs you won't even find a single Tylenol pill in my place so all these things are extra money in my pocket and my main source of entertainment if you will is doing exactly what I'm doing right now going for beautiful nature walks and some of my other videos you might note are me searching for beautiful waterfalls or uh, river scenes here on Vancouver Island and again that's part of my health routine and I'm very strict about my health routine getting outdoors getting some sunlight being in nature those kind of things that's what does it for me now one of my other hobbies is photography and uh, of course it costs a few dollars for a good camera but I bought my camera several years ago so that's already bought and paid for in my lenses and of course I like to do vlogs show you the beautiful area I'm walking by here obviously like I like to do vlogs and I had to pay for all my vlogging gear but again I was able to do that on my 20,000 US I actually like to write songs but with my tiny little space where I'm at I don't really have the room to set up for uh, doing recording and things so that's kind of put on hold at the moment so aside from food I guess that my main expense is probably uh, fuel for going on my little adventures around Vancouver Island uh, getting out into nature so I probably spend maybe during the summer months and spring maximum $200 for gas all totaled I'd say that I probably on average spend including car insurance and everything all in about $1,200 per month Canadian that's about I don't know 900 ish US and I don't mind I've already told you what I make per year so if you do the math I make 3200 Canadian dollars per month and in actuality in the past year I started collecting my Canadian pension which is a whopping $260 per month now but last year it was only 248 Canadian dollars per month so that's still included in the 20,000 I told you US per year but in actuality last year or a year ago when I didn't even get my Canadian pension I only made 18,000 US dollars so before this past year I wasn't even making the 20,000 I typically okay this past year I was away for four and a half months in Columbia the year before that four and a half months and the year before that I think it was four and then prior to that it's probably three but I could have and all the years traveled for four and a half months if I wanted to and again just so that you know I don't come home broke <laughs> once I get into telling you about my expenses when I'm in Colombia and of course 
this could apply to going to Southeast Asia, which is probably even a little bit cheaper, or many other Central American or South American countries where the uh, prices are pretty similar to Colombia. So there's lots of other options for places where you could travel to. As a matter of fact, there's a high likelihood that I'll be traveling to Vietnam and Cambodia, possibly Thailand, this coming winter. We'll see. So, to sum things up for my lifestyle, if I wanted, I could go for dinner here and there more, more often, but I just choose not to because I'd rather make my own food, knowing what ingredients are in everything. And I don't care about owning things like the latest iPhone or anything like that. Again, I don't care about impressing other people. I don't need all the latest technology. So I'm fine with my $150 cell phone that I bought down in Columbia uh, two trips ago. And that about sums things up. It's not that I couldn't afford to do other things. But I do the things that make me happy. And those things, fortunately, don't cost a whole lot. Before I move on to my lifestyle that I lead down in Colombia, I remember one other thing I should mention, just for absolute um, full disclosure. I do make a little bit of money from some of the books that I wrote that are on Amazon but uh, it's a very minimal amount to date, and so that still doesn't put me over the 20,000 US per year mark. Now, of course, a lot of you are not go going to be able to get into this situation that I have where I'm, where I'm on call, but I've got that perfect seniority spot where I work full time when I'm here in Victoria. And a lot of you aren't going to be able to pull that off. It's, it's something that I've consciously worked towards. And before I worked at the university, I, I did jobs where I was on call as well. And I was able to go away. But it was at the uh, expense of making potentially more money, of course. But some of you are able to work remotely uh, for instance at the university where I do work there's several people who work from home and of course they started doing that due to the pandemic and after they started working out of home they've just continued to do that for whatever their reasons are but I know that's an option for some of you. I mean, I can't tell other people how you could pull off what I do, but I know that a lot of people, when it comes right down to it, if we're being honest, they're not willing to do what I do. A lot of people might have seen the headline for my video and think there's some magical one that can be waived that can uh, get a person into a situation like I'm in but uh, no I have consciously worked towards having the lifestyle that I do On to part two, my lifestyle in Colombia. So if I wanted to, I could actually live on $500 Canadian, which is about $385 US, 
per month if I wanted to live a really you know, extra boring lifestyle, but I could still do it. But basically my lifestyle is much the same down there as it is here. I go out into nature a lot. I don't spend money on alcohol or drugs and I'm able to do my own cooking. So let me tell you how I set my situation up even better in the last three trips to Colombia over how it was before that. And I'll tell you that I've been to Columbia 19 times now and I started traveling there back 22 years ago. <clears throat> so typically before this past three years I would just stay in hostels or hotels. And I'm told that a hostel as a opposed to hostel <laughs> is a hotel that has a bunch of rooms that don't have private bathrooms so sometimes they do sometimes they don't anyway whatever the case there are hotels and hostels in Colombia and typically before I always always had a private room for myself and whenever possible with private bathroom and I'd say that on average, I was paying 15 to 20 Canadian dollars or 10 to 15 US dollars per night. And we're not talking about dives that were dumps. I'm talking about finding a place that was, you know, reasonably exceptional uh, via booking.com that had a pretty good rating in actuality there's places that had worse ratings that I could have stayed at even cheaper but I'd rather pay 15 to 20 dollars instead of 10 to 12 dollars and have a a nicer room in a nicer area that has good reviews so Four years ago, I went to one of my favorite towns, San Gil, in the uh, department of Santander, Colombia. <clears throat> and I found a place that was right by the main Plaza Principal, the main town square, for a pretty good price per night. And over time, I became friends with the person that ran the hostel who who has been in several of my Columbia videos. That would be Floor. And eventually after we became good friends and I really like Sand Hill for a lot of reasons. I won't get into that here. But I really like Sand Hill and the climate, the size of the town, among other things. And so she offered me a monthly rate which was a lot better than a nightly rate. <laughs> so the rate was so good that uh, I started making San Hill my home base. And so I generally get to Bogota and stay there maybe a couple nights in Bogota and then beeline it to San Hill and with my all my luggage. And then I'd use San Hill as my base to do travels to smaller towns for maybe three to seven night trips and I'm able to leave my large bag and just take a small travel bag with me and I pay for a monthly rate it was only $110 Canadian per month or 85 US but our Canadian dollar is not doing so well in the past year so this past year it's more like 130 or so Canadian dollars but the rate is so good that I actually give her some extra because I think it's uh, just I thought it fair to give her a little bit more for 
other things because it includes use of the kitchen, full use of the kitchen. I have my own bedroom to myself and it includes doing being able to do laundry and Flora actually does the laundry quite often and so she throws my clothes in too and doesn't charge me extra for that. It includes the toilet paper and so and Wi-Fi. So to me it's such a good deal I I thought that she deserved to get a little bit extra even so now when it comes to food I loosen up on my strictness when it comes to eating a little bit when I go to Columbia within reason so I typically will go out for lunch pretty much every day and the cost of the lunch where I go is 13,000, 12, 13,000 pesos, which is about uh, four Canadian dollars, three US. And the one place that I went to quite often was, I actually asked them to customize my lunch. And so I eliminated some things that I didn't want and asked them for more of the things that I did want. And again, I won't get into the kind of food. It's uh, your typical Colombian lunch, though. Let's put it that way. And so I'm spending basically around 300 Canadian dollars or 220 US dollars per month for food. So now we've got 150 for the rent and about 300 for the food. And then, again, if I want to, you know, live a really boring, simple life, I could live on that 450 right there. I've got, that covers my basics. <clears throat> but I do like to do travels to, there's a lot of neat little towns not too far away from Sand Hill. So I'll typically, a couple times per week, maybe uh, take a bus ride to one town called Batichara, for instance. There's Charala and a bunch of others and it costs literally two to three Canadian dollars for each way in other words four five six dollars round trip so that's not much and then I can have lunch in those towns and walk around and enjoy nature but more often than not and I'll give you an ex exact example I went to one town called Gambita where I wanted to see some caves and some waterfalls. And so when when I'm in another town for overnights, obviously I the way it works with my other room is those nights aren't counted as going towards my month. So if I'm in Sand Hill for one week, I go away for four days those four days are not applied to my month so it so basically it's 30 days whenever the 30 days are done that's how it works so that's really good too oh and I should mention also while it pops into my mind quickly the place where I live here in Victoria he doesn't charge me the uh, the 300 or 350 when it's the colder months and I have to use heat that I pay for rent here in Victoria he just charges me a $50 storage fee. So again, <laughs> I've got it pretty good when it comes to all those things, I have to admit. So if I go to Gambita, again, going back to that, I'll typically pay, again, $15 to $20 for a private room in a half-decent hotel or hostel. And to go to most, a lot of the waterfalls and caves here in Colombia nowadays, you either have to hire a guide or you need to hire a guide. In this case, I needed to because it's a little distance out of town. I don't, of course, have a vehicle in Colombia. So I paid 120,000 pesos for a private guide for basically all day. He had his motorcycle. And so I went with him to visit the caves and waterfalls. And 120,000 pesos is approximately 45 uh, yeah it's about 45 
Canadian dollars, 35 US, for having a private guide all day. So that for me is kind of a splurge. But again, I can afford to do these kinds of things. That's not an issue whatsoever. I could hire private guides, you know, 10 times per month if I really wanted to. Now, I generally don't, but I don't need to scrimp and cheap out as much as it might sound like. I could go out for dinner, I could go out for lunch, I could go to movies, whatever I really wanted for that four and a half months within reason, and I'd come back not having spent a lot of money. So anyway, completing my thoughts on the Gambita style trip. That's what I will do typically is I'll go somewhere and if I have to I'll hire a guide but some areas you can go to a waterfall you can get a ride on a motorcycle get dropped off the motorcycle might cost 10 bucks round trip or something like that uh, take Kurati a recent video that I posted it costs three dollars 25 cents each way on the tuk-tuk to get to a river and from there I walked along the river and found some amazingly beautiful pools and went swimming and made some videos and that whole part was free and then I had lunch in Kurati and then went back to Sand Hill beautiful wonderful day trip and it hardly cost me anything so those are the typical costs that I have Buses are pretty cheap in Colombia. To give you an example of bus costs, a full 10 to 10 hour bus ride from, for instance, Bogota to Medellin is around 35 Canadian dollars, 27 US. So much cheaper than here in Canada or down in the US for sure. So that's going to be one of my bigger expenses and fortunately taxis are pretty cheap as well although those prices have gone up significantly over the last two years since the uh, price of gas started going up everywhere and even the prices of food for that matter down in Columbia they have gone up each year but it's still very affordable and you can apply all these things that I'm saying to Southeast Asia or Central America and who knows maybe some places like Turkey in uh, Europe but I don't have any plans to go in there so I don't know what the costs are but I think it's pretty cheap in some countries around that area I'll mention that I really don't buy souvenirs because I live a minimalist lifestyle I stopped buying souvenirs several years ago. I might just buy, you know, a couple shirts. For instance, this hat I bought during the last trip. My other hat's getting a little ratty. But I'd say at the very most, on a really active month down in Columbia where I'm doing a fair amount of traveling around the country and going on adventures, maybe 1,200 Canadian, 900 US. That's, that's a, an active month. For instance, when I went to the uh, Department of Meta and I did some canyon tours, river canyon tours, you know, those cost about $40, $50 each, and I think they're going up too. But again, for I'm talking about a fully guided tour, including transportation to hotel there and back, often including lunch, sometimes even including breakfast in one instance that I'm thinking of uh, at one of the canyons, Canyon Rio Guejar, in particular in Meta, which is just absolutely gorgeous by the way, and uh, Canyon Rio Guape, just could be the most beautiful slot canyon in all of the entire world, never mind just Colombia, just spectacular. And those were costing me 40 to 50 now maybe as much as 60 because I didn't do those ones this year. But I know they went up. So for all in, all in for a full day of adventure, that's pretty darn good.
So even if I was to spend that $1,200 per month for the entire four and a half months, I'd still come back and have some money in the bank left. But again, I'm quite content to live very simply and to chill out in Sand Hill where I use as my home base again and of course it takes time to edit these videos and so I'll go adventuring for a week to ten days and come back to Sand Hill for a week to ten days or two weeks even and I'll just totally chill out do little day trips here and there edit some videos and I'm I'm a happy camper just looking out my notes to make sure that I covered all the things I'd written down. There's a couple more things. Um, to get a, a cell phone SIM card down Columbia is really cheap as well. And you can get them in all kinds of different stores and kiosks out in the street in Bogota as soon as you get to Bogota for instance. And the initial one that gives you a certain amount of minutes maybe a little bit of data can cost as low as four or five dollars Canadian three or four US and if you want to get a, a more complete package like I did there's various companies that you have options there's uh, Tigo, Movie Star and I'm forgetting a couple of the other ones but anyway I had a package with Movie Star and it cost me 16,000 pesos per month and that gave me I think it was unlimited data and calling in Colombia and even some international calling and that's about seven dollars Canadian five US and I really didn't even hardly use it so at one point I didn't even bother renewing it for one month and of course that didn't cost me anything but there's Wi-Fi quite often on the buses I had Wi-Fi where I was staying in Sand Hill, Wi-Fi, again, just so you know, it's not like a third world country. There is some areas that are really poor in Colombia, yes. And yes, there are areas in Colombia that are very dangerous. But um, overall, you don't have problems with getting Wi-Fi and pretty much all the hotels have it nowadays. Not maybe the fastest Wi-Fi, but they do have Wi-Fi. And I did forget to mention that I do have a cell phone, of course, here in Canada. And that cost me $45 per month. So I get the minimal because I don't really uh, make a whole lot of calls or receive a lot of calls. So that's all pretty cheap. So some of you particularly guys are going to be wondering, well, what about... Uh, dating some of those gorgeous Colombian women. Don't you date women down there? And the answer is, when I first started coming here, I actually went on a fair amount of dates back when I was younger. I started coming here, I guess, when I was 40 years old. And so it was a lot easier, quite frankly, to get dates when you're 40 as soon as you hit 50 and I'm just being honest here if you're going down there to date the pretty Colombian woman once you hit 50 uh, yeah you can get as many dates as you want but you have to be like a sugar daddy if I'm to be completely forthright and honest which I am going to be once I hit 50 years old the uh, dating opportunities started becoming less and less unless I want to uh, or had the ability to become a sugar daddy and I don't have the ability or the money to be a sugar daddy and even if I was a millionaire I would not be a sugar daddy and just for absolute clarity I have not been a sex tourist down in Colombia and of course that is a, a thing in Colombia particularly Medellin if that's your thing well you can go to Medellin 
but I personally pretty much stay away from all the big cities in whatever country I'm visiting including Colombia and I really enjoy going to the charming and quaint and safe and friendly small towns of Colombia and there's a, an abundance of those you could travel in Colombia for a few years and keep discovering beautiful little towns which I have a lot of vlogs of on my channel I think that's gonna wrap things up for my lifestyle in Colombia but if there's some questions you have about my lifestyle in Colombia that I might not have added or even my lifestyle here in Canada feel free to ask in the comments section during the past three trips I don't think I've even had any dates at all in Colombia and besides the fact that I'm not willing to be a sugar daddy <laughs> uh, I am a very selective person and I want to go out with women and just for clarity again I am only interested in women but I want to go out with a woman that I have things in common with which includes health and fitness getting out into nature adventure preferably a sense of humor and on and on so it's just getting harder and harder to find good women anywhere for that matter and yes I know it's hard for good women to find good men as well so I know it's a two-way street but uh, I hate to say it but I'm going to tell you the truth the Colombian women are becoming more and more materialistic especially the pretty ones and they're holding out for a guy who wants to spend lots of money on them and take them on trips while they basically do nothing but look pretty for their their sugar daddy so that doesn't work out so well for guys like me but that's okay with all that said let's move on to part three which is what is it that motivates me to live the way that I do now if you're really really curious about that I've written three books volumes one two and three called getting real in the unreal world the story of a rude awakening and inspiration by me Thomas J Dawson that are available on ebook and available on Amazon and in my books the first two are basically about my life it's partial autobiography and the struggles that I had and my personal transformation as well as my philosophies on life and I look into three main categories which are health why the world is as it is and whether or not there is something that we call God whether or not that he she or it exists and whether there's a purpose to life and all those kind of things so I spent a lot of my life searching for those answers and so what motivates me to live the way that I do I'm going to say some things that some of you might not appreciate or agree with and that's totally fine you can disagree or dislike whatever I say you're free to do all that but one thing I learned a long time ago is that material things that so many people are seeking to have and covet do not ultimately make a person happy there's so many rich people who are super miserable that it goes to prove that having millions of dollars or even billions of dollars these days does not make a person happy so part of my search was what is it that really makes a person happy and I can be content and at peace 
with just living a very simple life and my number one priority is my health. Some people will disagree with that and say, no, no, it's family that should be number one. But I'd argue that if you're really sick and you're in the hospital, lying on a hospital bed with IVs in your arm and you're all pumped up with pharmaceutical drugs and your family's in there wishing you well and there for you, it's going to be pretty hard to be happy when you're in that kind of a state. And so I say that health should be number one because it's health that allows me at 61 years old, going on 62 in another half a year, that allows me to do all the same activities that I was doing when I was in my 20s and 30s. Literally, I can do all those kinds of things. I still go on adventures as you can see in my videos on YouTube. I feel at least as good as when I was in my 20s. Probably better in a way because I used to play hockey and I had sore knees back then, but I didn't really eat that well. So if I would have ate really well, I probably would have had stronger muscles and uh, ligaments, etc. And I used to do sports and my ankle used to hurt and I used to lift weights when I was about 19 years old and I didn't warm up properly so I had tendonitis in my wrist because I was lifting really heavy weights to start off with. So yes, foolish things I did, I fully admit. <laughs> but I actually feel better now. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. I still, um, when I'm on the road in Columbia, by the way, I fill up a bunch of different sized bottles with water so they're different weights and that's my weight set. I don't need to join the gym, but if I wanted to, I could join the gym for a month for uh, $20 in Sand Hill. But I uh, work out regularly when I'm on the road and I eat pretty good. Not as strictly as I do when I'm here, back on the island. Here I'm way stricter than the average person, but anyway. I won't ramble on and on about all this, but to me it's really important to prioritize health. And with any luck, or although I shouldn't say luck because I think it's a matter of lifestyle choices, I have two uncles, one who made it to I believe 95, another one is already 96 I think, and I have an aunt who is already over 100 years old. Unfortunately, my mom didn't leave, live a super healthy lifestyle, nor did my sister, and they're both gone way earlier than they had to, I think, even though my mom made it to 85, but she could have lived to be 102 if she would have made different lifestyle choices. And so, I urge you to uh, prioritize, prioritize your health in my third book which is 655 pages long I fully believe is one of the most comprehensive books written on the topic of the keys to health and longevity and unfortunately for some people they're only available on ebook form but for less than ten dollars per book there's a whole bunch of information that I like to think from my life experience will help other people to find greater peace and happiness and you know that's one of the goals that I fail to mention on my travel vlogs is that one of my goals is to show people that into your 60s if you take care of yourself you can still be out and do all the same things you did if you were healthy back in your 20s you can do those same things. And again, my goal is to keep doing these kinds of things into my 70s and hopefully 80s and ideally until I basically die. <laughs> but I don't actually believe that we die. I do believe we have a soul. 
And so that kind of lends itself to some of my other beliefs. I'm not religious. And I don't even call myself spiritual anymore because there's so many different versions of spirituality now. And I really don't go along with a lot of them. But, you know, I, I do believe in having morals and principles and values and being a, a good quality human being that can be trusted. And we're really lacking that on this planet right now, I think. But remember, I know there's a lot of you out there, the good people who think what a horrible world it is, has become now. But never forget that there are some really wonderful people still on this planet. Probably a lot more wonderful than me even. <laughs> so I'm not perfect either, but there are some awesome good people that can be trusted on this planet. Might be hard to find, but if your circle of friends doesn't include people like that, I'd suggest that you uh, reevaluate your priorities and regain your health and I'd love to see everybody get into a state of healthiness and harmony and all those what some might consider to be corny things but again to just sum things up I'm a curious person I love trying new foods even so when I go traveling it's not that I am so strict that I won't try something new and interesting food wise or like I said a glass of wine I will do those things but because I'm already in a good state of health I know what my body can handle and what it can't so I can do that it's not an issue and if you eat junk food all the time it's not that it's wrong I'm not judging you at all if you go to Medellin for sex tourism I'm not judging you or assessing it as right or wrong it's just certain actions that people are doing and they have consequences simple as that so again as I've said I live a simple life and I can continue living a simple life uh, and I don't need to impress others do you think I'm a complete idiot I'm to it doesn't bother me whatsoever you disagree with me that's totally cool I don't feel any need to convince anybody in an argument if what I say makes some sense I hope maybe it even helps a little bit if not disregard go on to the next YouTube video and find people that you resonate more with simple as that so I think that's all that I really need to say about my motivation I love my freedom. I love visiting new cultures, which sadly are disappearing more and more as our world becomes more and more homogenized. And I'm not going to, I'm going to refrain from talking about why I think all of that is, but it comes under the one category I mentioned of why is the world in the state that it's in? Sure, I've rambled on far too long so thanks for watching hope maybe you got something beneficial from listening to my ramblings though and until next time peace maybe I'll see you in Southeast Asia soon bye for now so this is my vehicle that I told you about 1998 Honda CRV and look at how fortunate I am to live on this five acres of large trees and forested land. And this is exactly how I like to live out in the fresh air, out in the country, suburbs of Victoria. And then up these stairs right here, that's where I live. 
tiny little place up there, like I said, above a garden shed. I'll show you where I do my cooking. I actually do have a full-size fridge. That's about the most luxury thing that I have. <laughs> and then I have a little hot plate right there with just two burners. And I only have cold water. And my view is this. The garden, maple trees, and lots of trees. So it might be roughing it in certain ways. It's like living in a really rustic cabin at best. But the view is great. And the rent is even better. So I'm not going to show you the entire place because quite frankly, everything is a mess because I have things in Rubbermaid containers because I have no storage. Like say this is 12 and a half foot by 12 and a half foot. Right there you can see from one wall to the other. <laughs> but that's my bed. Not even a single size, but I have a memory foam mattress, which is more comfortable than any bed that I slept in in Columbia. Again, there's my view. And amazingly, one of the best parts, although it gets super toasty in here during the summer, I have two skylights, so it's really bright in here. Now another bonus, I have my laptop on the window ledge because that's literally the only place I can get the Wi-Fi signal. And that is actually, to me, a good thing. And as far as my cell phone is considered, um, I barely get a signal here as well. And I don't want to be bathed in uh, Wi-Fi and uh, cell phone signal. So that works out good. This is my massive heater for the chillier nights, but I go away for the winter, so... I miss most of that. Here's my my one and only sink with only cold water. And that's my one and only little light because the electrical is such that I can only plug in a few things at a time or else I blow the circuit. <laughs> but I'll take the trade off of paying only three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars per month. And this is a view out my back window. And this is the view out my side window. So I have lots and lots of bright light in here. That's a little greenhouse down there. My goal, however, one day is to live in a beautiful bamboo hut a la Swiss Family Robinson with uh, at least two to three acres worth of land wherein I can grow everything that I need and have a couple of different farm animals so I can be completely self-sufficient as much as, as possible.